Uh, Oklahoma is known as, as kind of a pioneer state for all kinds of things. When it comes to weather, we really have been pioneers for decades in the area of weather research. The Mesonet fits right in with that culture and that history of being innovative, being on the cutting edge. They were the first Mesonet uh, like that anywhere in any state across the country and they still, as far as I know, they're still the gold standard. The idea for the Mesonet really got started back with the disastrous Tulsa flood of 1984 over Memorial Day. And at that time, um, Dr. Kenneth Crawford, who was the area manager for the National Weather Service, knew that if you just had access to more real-time um, county level weather data, you could provide better warnings and forecasts for the public. And so Dr. Ken Crawford came to the university in, in the late 80s and to start this Mesonet, he learned that similar ideas were um, in the works at Oklahoma State University with Dr. Ron Elliott leading those. We had in the back of our mind a dream where we could get data from more locations, first of all, but also more timely. And we learned uh, kind of fortuitously that some folks in Norman, Oklahoma, known as for their weather uh, and climate work, uh, were interested in a statewide network as well. And we put our heads together starting, I believe, in about 1987 and began plotting and brainstorming and dreaming and doing some early design work very early. They started working together, the two universities, OU and OSU, to go after funding for the Oklahoma Mesonet. Oklahoma became the recipient of some an oil overcharge settlement. It was a federal settlement. Each state got a pretty decent uh, chunk of money because of that. And we convinced uh, Governor Bellman at the time, Henry Bellman, and his colleagues at the Capitol that a joint OU-OSU collaborative weather network would be a great use of those uh, energy-based funds that became available to the state. But before I was a member of Congress, I was a member of the state legislature. Uh, governor Bellman was governor in my uh, first term in the state legislature, and he was a big proponent of creating this statewide uh, set, of, set of weather stations so that we could provide free and accessible information to anyone who, who desired the info. Uh, the University of Oklahoma and Oklahoma State University each put in money as well to help match that to give us about a $2.7 million budget. It was one of the things that enabled us to convince Governor Bellman that this was a good idea. He told us that when, when I had OU and OSU coming together to me and wanting the same thing, he said, I knew it must be pretty good. We don't think of it as a bedlam rivalry, but a bedlam partnership that, that has borne fruit. In the very early days, such an emphasis was on making the data research quality, having the observations calibrated, or having the sensors calibrated before they went out to a tower, so that we know now 25 years later, we can trust those original observations. Of course, we've learned more and we've We've made modifications over the years to continue to improve it, but our goal has always been that um, for future generations be able to look back at this data and be able to trust it and use it for a wide variety of applications. From a scientific standpoint, uh, one of the things we really love about the Mesonet is we know that the data is good. We know that there's quality control processes going on. We know that someone is looking over that data. So if we get a 90 mile an hour wind gust at a Mesonet site, there's somebody down the hall that's looking at that data and saying, yep, that's, that's accurate, or we're gonna flag that and take a look at it. That gives us a good feeling knowing that the, the high quality data, uh, it gives us more confidence in using that. It was very clear that this was going to be a major advancement for our observing capabilities um, uh, on what was termed the mesoscale, a uh, small scale, both in space and time that would be incredibly useful for sustaining situational awareness and uh, providing another input for our forecast in the morning. Weather drives everything we do and having, having that observation system in place that gives us those observations, that it's really, you really can't replace that. Our stations are the uh, ground truth at, at 120 locations around the state. They're, they're measuring uh, minute by minute what's really happening out there. Uh, having observational data, knowing what's going on across the state helps us in, in many different ways. Uh, obviously, 
we're looking for weather features that can help spark thunderstorms. And one of the features here in Oklahoma that many people have probably heard of is the dry line. Thunderstorms like to form along that boundary. Having a, a system like the Oklahoma Mesonet lets us identify where that boundary is and to track its movement. It's designed to provide information we can use. So we get information on the, ap uh, on the atmosphere right above the ground uh, with respect to temperature, uh, uh, moisture, uh, winds, and, uh, and then we get information below the ground. That's really important for um, our river forecast, for example. Um, so the, the information is useful from that re regard alone, but it's also designed um, on almost a grid, uh, a fine resolution grid, that uh, we get this temperature with much more uh, uh, horizontal resolution and temporal resolution uh, that uh, sustains our situational awareness in ways that other observing networks don't do. You'd be amazed at the number of people who use this asset. I mean, there's everything on a mesonet site from, of course, air temperature and rainfall uh, at different heights above and below the ground, moisture levels at different zones, the temperature of the soil at different zones, the advantage of, of a network like this is we measure a lot of different parameters close to the ground and they're spread out all over the state. Every five minutes we get updates and when we're tracking storms and the, even winter weather to severe weather to flooding, even wildfires, it's critical to have those updates minute by minute. And we have the sensors all over the state of Oklahoma. It's not just limited to Oklahoma City. We can look far out into western Oklahoma, all the way to the north, all the way to the south. And that data, I mean, it's, it's everything when it comes to forecasting or even now casting and telling folks what the storms are doing. We routinely use Mesonet data to help us track uh, the progress of severe thunderstorms. We may issue a warning for a storm based on radar estimating that it has 70 mile an hour winds, but getting that mesonet observation that says it was 72 or 68, that's the ground truth and that's actually what's happening. So you really can't replace that data. We really didn't know what the application could be. We knew that there was data that would be coming in from across the state. We knew that this would be a good thing for emergency management in general. And the truth is, I don't think any of us really knew uh, because it's still, it's still evolving today. When you talk about local emergency managers and the fact that they could have this data in five minute increments. Okay, fire, the fact that the wildfires around the state, I can tell you what the environmental conditions are in the panhandle of Oklahoma right now and, and then look to uh, the wind speeds that could be coming up and the fire conditions we could have further in the state. That's amazing to me. Uh, and I don't think we've even come close to, to getting the full uh, effect of what this provides. Real-time data is just something we can't live without. When our uh, forestry folks go out to respond to wildland fire, there's a lot of things that they do through incident command uh, that requires that they have real-time information to access. Certainly when we talk about uh, what the wind looks like um, and how that fire is going to move and progress, that helps them to stage those resources a lot better. And we're very thankful to have the Mesonet to access uh, to help us and our Forestry Services Division do a, they do an excellent job, but to do an even better job uh, because data helps them to make better decisions. The Mesonet now, I could be sitting on a fire scene and have all that weather information sitting there in the palm of my hand. So I can see the weather changes coming in. I can bring up on the mesonet to where we're going and know exactly what the weather conditions are. So that type of information is, is very critical to us. We just had a fire last year and we did get information that we were going to have a wind shift. And by watching the mesonet and the changes through the different weather, through the different mesonet sites, we was able to time that uh, wind shift. And not only did it give us uh, be able to get our crews into a safe area, not being in the wrong spot at the wrong time when that wind shift hit. We was also able to pre-stage resources because if fire did, if that fire did break out, and it did in a couple of spots, we had pre-stage resources already sitting there to take care of those take care of those fires. And that was all information that I was able to pull off the mesonet that I was able to pull down to almost in a minute to when that wind shift was going to hit us on that fire, and it made a big difference. On May 19th of 2013, there were uh, a series of severe storms here in central Oklahoma, affected 
uh, over at Shawnee and Bethel Acres. And we knew that the next morning, wherever the dry line was, that just to the east of the dry line, there would be issues. Uh, so when we woke up the next morning, first thing we did, looked right at the weather map, where, where are the features and where for sure are the features. We knew that given the, the humidity ahead of the dry line and, and the wind shear and, and all of the, the ingredients necessary that uh, someone was going to have probably a bad day and unfortunately it ended up being us. It's very important to us in the severe weather uh, observation world knowing where the, the very small boundaries are because that may be where the, the next storm forms. Um, there's, there's been many a time that, that if we were relying simply on the data that we had before, we would never have seen features that caused us issues of, of one nature or another. If I'd had to wait hour by hour, hoping that we got the observations and then those observations actually being 10 or 15 minutes after the OB, you know, we're, we're already playing behind the curve. Uh, having real-time updates uh, is, is critical. Constantly I'm looking at that, especially on days like this when I, when I need real-time information, I can look up and look at you know, relative humidity real fast or I can look up a map and, and pull that up on the app. We have looked at different weather monitoring options out there trying to find some kind of solution. In conjunction with the Mesonet growing, you've got all this technology that's bringing it further forward. It gives us some significant data. Um, that's a big first step is being able to access that. You can carry around a weather station in your pocket. Tremendous tool to have in a preparedness toolbox. I think any emergency manager would tell you that. Certainly utilities in the state of Oklahoma, the co-ops that I work for, that's what we use the Mesonet for is a preparedness tool and it's a great fit. Because our service territory is the entire state of Oklahoma. It's important for us to know not only the weather, uh, and the data that is being driven by the weather, but the climatology for that reason. What's going to happen and when? And the Mesonet does that for us. But more importantly, just for the, the general audience in the state of Oklahoma, um, it's a safety feature for them as well to know what the weather is doing in their particular area, what the winds may be doing, whether a fire may be involved and how those uh, winds are going to be affecting the direction and the movement of the fire. So from a purely safety standpoint, I think it's of great value to every citizen in the state of Oklahoma. My dad was very meticulous about record keeping. So prior to the Mesnet, he wrote down rain events in his ledger book. You know, we got five inches of rain on this day, or, you know, we went 40 days without any rain. You know, back in the early 80s, we went 30 some days of the 100 plus degree weather. I mean, he wrote all that down. Today, I got it at my fingertips on my phone. You know, and I think just having that information there, you know, for the next 25 years, I think it helps us manage what we do as act producers in this state. And from that standpoint, it's very valuable. I mean, it's a great partnership between OU and OSU and the act producers in this state. The communities, I mean, it's just a great tool for everybody that has access and it's free to the public. I could get on my phone or my iPad, you know, and just pull up the wine on the site and be able to see what's going on here back at the ranch. But it's been a great asset for us and, and the neighbors here in Osage County. Weather is extremely important. We, we live and die by the weather. You know, we're, we're either uh, too wet or we're too dry or we're too hot or we're too cold. You know, I primarily use it to look at soil temperatures, kind of to know when the grass is going to start growing. Uh, we use it for weather information. We like to use the fire planning tool. It gives us a prediction of soil, uh, you know, soil moisture, temperatures, wind speeds, relative humidity, and uh, it, it, it's, it's just uh, a, a, another resource for me to have on hand to try to be a better manager. And I've got a lot of friends in Texas that wish they had. Uh, a, a weather tool like we have here in Oklahoma. As far as I'm concerned, it's one of the best things uh, Oklahoma has ever done is, is to put, put this system together. I mean, we've got a station every county. We use it for the fire weather. And uh, before doing a burn, we check the, we set our parameters, which is on the screen, makes it easy. 
and then watch for that window of opportunity. And I start getting alerts about 72 hours out and uh, it, it's great for that. You can check it during the burn, check the station here, check the station in Ellis County, the one in Dewey County, and make sure that things aren't changing on you. So duplicating what Mother Nature has done is critically important. And one of the great scourges of our life, Eastern Red Cedar. And you absolutely have to have tools like the Mesonet to be able to control those burns. For me, with a prescribed burn, I can run a few more cattle. It also helps the wildlife. Here in Roger Mills County, hunting industry has developed, but I think the burning will help. As I visit with folks, I, I let them know, you know, we don't have a thermometer or a rain gauge on a ranch anymore. We're within about a mile of the Mesonet station, and so we just, you know, get our phones out and we know exactly how much rain we had, you know, what the sunlight is, uh, you know, how long a day it's going to be and what our soil temperature is. We began to use Mesonet uh, in working with our veterinarians the last few years. And what it's allowed us to do by using the Cattle Comfort Advisor and a lot of the different tools on Mesonet, we've managed to eliminate feed antibiotics in all of our feed. We've also eliminated using uh, mass medications with our cattle and so this actually has not only saved us money but by working with our veterinarian and then the Mesonet programs it has also made us better stewards of the land than cattle. Mesonet is just that tool that has so many different data points on it that we're, we're gaining knowledge every day that helps us move forward. We do a, uh, a ranch management program here at Eastern and concentrating on stalker cattle. And one of the very first things that I always have the students do as they come into the program is to download the Mesonet program. If they don't have it on their phone already, uh, I just require them to get it downloaded on their phone and begin to use it and access the data. So it really helps our producers to do a better job. Uh, they can make better plans. Uh, they can respond to weather events, I think, better than we ever did historically. You know, certainly our uh, parents and grandparents and great-grandparents did a wonderful job uh, as farmers and ranchers, but I think that helps us today do an even better job, be better stewards of our resources, uh, and, and produce a lot more uh, with the resources that we have available. In the early days, we didn't foresee all the uses of our weather data. Uh, we couldn't have imagined the breadth of that. And it's kind of like that now with climate. We probably can't envision all the ways that our climate data set will be used in the future. There's been several Oklahoma Mesonet sites that have been directly impacted by tornadoes in recent years. Back in November 2011, really the first day ever in our history that a site had been toppled by a tornado. And the same storm brought tornadoes both to our Fort Cobb and Tipton Mesonet sites and both of the towers were toppled. It's like a CSI television show that you might see where meteorologists are pouring over every piece of data to try to determine what exactly happened. A lot of times when wind tears something up, we don't know if it was a tornado or if it was straight line winds. Literally five minutes before, winds were normal, conditions were normal as every Oklahoman knows. And then five minutes later, you've got a tornado bearing down and we had winds up to about 90 miles an hour before debris, um, an irrigation pivot at one spot and a, a tractor hit another site and toppled them. So our winds, of course, were no longer uh, accessible, but we got some really unique pressure data. Some of the data from the Mesonet, like looking at, um, we have what's called mediagrams, which is a trace of each weather element minute by minute. We can look at the trace of the barometric pressure, for example, and see if there's a rapid fall and then a rapid rise that might that that might indicate that there was a you know a small area low pressure perhaps a tornado that moved near or over that site so certainly for forensic purposes for going back after the fact mesonet data is is awesome and i know that there are studies done uh very difficult studies uh to show uh in some of the more recent outbreaks in oklahoma with the lo low loss of life how these advancement across the entire spectrum from observations to warning to working with the emergency management community uh, to ensure the proper response, 
has certainly saved lives in those uh, uh, major severe weather outbreaks. It's hard to know if a fire was contained really quickly in Oklahoma, how much did you save, what, what could have happened. But we did have some examples where a fire broke out in the, on the other side of the border in Texas where they didn't have access to the data and the millions of dollars it cost that community. So we're looking at that. It's also a challenge to know how if you save a life because you're providing a better um, forecast of the dry line and you know where convection is going to initiate, maybe you can prepare that community better. Um, we just know it works a lot of the times. We have lots of testimonies where emergency managers say we help them prepare. And if we hadn't been there, maybe, maybe there would have been more fatalities or more damage to property. The Oklahoma Mesonet to me is uh, you know, they're weather camps. They send out people to talk to different schools. They have different seminars here on climate. I mean, there's just so much that goes on behind the scenes that lots of people don't really know about. It's not just temperature observations. It's not just watching the cold front come through. The mesonet is made up of so many different things, a tripod, if you will, and one of them is their outreach program, and I think it's absolutely fantastic. I would tell them thank you because they really, really want kids to come to the camp and to ask questions and to be curious and to want to be involved in the STEM field because, you know, we need more awesome scientists and whatnot. So it's not, it's not just observations, it's not just agriculture. There's so much more to the Mesonet that lots of people don't know about. Just it was a really big connection point for me to come to the camp and meet everyone at the Mesonet. That's how I know them. Um, my freshman class was the first freshman class down at the Weather Center and so I was very lucky to have the mezzanine right there, you know, in the building. Um, got to work with a lot of the folks there and got to just see firsthand how they use the data, how the data quality control is done, got to go out and see the different mezzanine sites as part of our classes. So that was a very integral part of the education for my meteorology degree was using the mezzanine and understanding how weather is measured and how all the instrumentation works. Every time I have a conversation outside of Oklahoma, people talk about the Oklahoma Mesonet. They know it's there. there. There are a lot of people that are jealous of, of the, uh, the resource that we have here because, I mean, it, it does provide incredible information, real-time information to, to people who need to know, um, and it's essential. I think since the Mesonet became known nationally among the weather community, when other states started knowing that well, look what Oklahoma's got. They've got this entire network with over 100 observation stations, very high quality data, updated every minute, five minutes. Uh, there was a lot of people looking at that thinking we need to get one of those. That has expanded. There are other, there are other states that have emulated what the Oklahoma Mesonet started and have tried to duplicate that. There's other mesonets in other states, but uh, certainly the Oklahoma Mesonet was the first. We're very lucky. We have something that is world class. You're not going to find it. There's, it's second to none. Um, because of that, we're able to forecast the weather in a different way than other meteorologists across the country. We're able to look at vital parts of storms, of storm systems on a large scale, on a small scale, and just minute by minute see that evolution. And that's not something folks can do across the country. The science that has been uh, uh, done there uh, has had a profound impact uh, on our understanding of severe weather across the country. With the research that's been done in Oklahoma and the way this data feeds into that has been, uh, been a gold mine uh, for the science community, and it's uh, certainly been very uh, important for us to help us refine our forecast and warnings uh, for the state area that this network covers. It's been, uh, I think, from a science perspective and a service perspective, something that the state of Oklahoma can be quite proud of. And uh, it is a premier program for our state, and I'm very, very proud of it as an Oklahoman. And so uh, I wish Mezzanet a happy 25th and look forward to the next 25. We're, we're really fortunate. We get to work in the building beside these folks and we get to see them in the hallway and participate in classes and activities with them. We know how hard they work. We know how much they care about the system and about the people of Oklahoma. And uh, that, makes it a, that makes it a really powerful thing to deal with. Governor Bellman had a long field of view 25 plus years ago when he advocated for this. 
sometimes you've got to look 25 or 50 years down the road if you're going to get to where we need to be. And Linda and I think both, both from a producer's perspective, yeah, public official's perspective, we should be really proud of the Mesonet system in Oklahoma. The Mesonet could never have happened had it been simply for public safety or simply for agriculture or simply for some other uh, industry. It had to be something that was, would benefit all Oklahomans. And that is, that's where the vision came. And that in itself makes for partnerships. Who would ever have thought that we could have gotten uh, Aggies and Sooners together it, but we do, and we all work together because we know it's, it's not about any one of us, it's about all of us. Uh, decisions are being made, lives are being changed, organizations are reacting to what we're measuring, and, and uh, that, I think that's, I mean, I, I think that's one of the things universities should be about. I can't imagine working in this office or working in Oklahoma or in this area without having that data, especially now having gotten so used to it and using it and seeing everything that it can give us, um, not only from a weather forecasting perspective, but from a historical perspective, knowing what's happened in the past, giving people an idea of what can happen, tracking the extremes of weather that we've seen over recent years. Um, yeah, I, I, can't, I, wouldn't wanna, I wouldn't wanna work here without that.